Here we go. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Fly Tying Tuesdays here with Carlisle Fly and Foul. Today we are tying a jig nymph called the France Fly. Um, and this is just a really a style of flies that uh, utilizes this uh, uh, micro stretch dubbing uh, for the body. Um, and we'll show you a little bit into that. But um, anyway, it's just a super effective fly. You can tie it in all kinds of different color variations, however you like it. Um, this one I'm going with a pink bead and the brown stretch tubing with some um, kind of darker flash uh, or eye stub for the for the collar there. So um, and it's just a CDL tail, super simple fly, super easy to tie um, and super effective. So we're gonna dive on in today. I'm gonna show you guys how to tie this. Okay, starting off with a Saluda beads jig hook wide in size 18 and saluta beads 2.3 millimeter tungsten slotted bead and this is pink like a light pink metallic pink color um, and just using some black gsp thread um, basically just because i'm too lazy to swap over to brown and it's not really going to make a big of a difference but um, but i do like i do really like this uh, gsp thread it's just super thin and uh super super low bulk on a body or, or virtually no bulk on the bodies um, so just gonna get our thread started here and work our way rearward and we're gonna tie in our tail so again just using some CDL fibers and pull off I don't know four or so fibers off of the stem and do a couple of loose wraps to tie them to the hook and then we're going to pull those tailing fibers to length I don't think that looks good do a couple more wraps we'll wrap forward secure those tailing fibers and cut the excess off All right, we're going to bring our thread forward to right behind the bead and make sure that bead is secure. And that's one of the things that I really love about these Saluda beads. Um, it's just the uh, the hole on the for the slot for the bead is just so much smaller. So it takes very little thread wraps or other material to really lock that bead down in place. Some of these other slotted tungsten beads... The opening is just so wide and it makes it, you just have to use a whole spool of thread to, to lock it down. It's kind of annoying. Um, but one thing I will say though too is that that does make a bit of a difference on hook sizes. So you kind of got to be a little bit careful with that. So we're just going to get this started right behind the bead. And just do like a couple of loose wraps or so to be able to pull that tight so we can lock it down and pull that tight and bring your thread rearward to right at the base of the tail and then we can bring our thread back forward and we're going to lock that piece down into place and at this point I'm just going to throw in two half hitches um, just so that way we can save our work and we can utilize the rotary function of this vise. So what you want to do with the stretch tubing is really nice. It's super stretchy, but that's the way that you can taper the body. So when we start our first few wraps here at the base of the tail, we want to be really, really tight to this uh, tubing. And as we work our way forward to the bead, we're going to loosen some of the tension up. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a nice tapered body. Okay. So now we've got our stretch tubing and we are just going to do t close touching wraps forward and then we're going to start easing some of that tension off and build a little bit of a taper as we work our way forward. 
and then we're going to tie that off here right behind the bead and now another trick with this stretch tubing is we can pull it tight to trim it and it's going to be super close cut so now you can't even see where I just cut that thread off um, but yeah that's a super nice tapered body on that um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in with some of this uh, dubbing here it's red fox squirrel thorax um, but we'll show you it's kind of like a golden brown lighter flash um, it's just super buggy looking um, but I really liked that variant on this particular fly but again you can um, you can do all kinds of different color variations um, really the sky's the limit on that so we're just going to dub just a nice little thorax behind this bead here do a couple cross wraps there to lock that into place and now we're going to come in with our whip finish tool and uh, whip, do a four or five turn whip finish here. And nice, just cut your thread off like that. And there you have it, that is the France fly. And again, the France fly is really just a, a style of nymphs with this micro tubing, stretch tubing. Um, you can do black, golden stone, red. I mean, there, there's all kinds of different color variations. But, um, but you guys pick some out, figure out what works for you. This has been a really, uh, really good pattern for me lately. Um, I have a quite, uh, caught quite a fish. I have caught quite a few fish on it. Um, so it's been uh, been really fun, but um, but yeah, you guys uh, also check out uh, some of my other videos if you haven't already. I just dropped a uh, a really fun Brookie adventure video um, in Western North Carolina. That was a super fun video to the film. Uh, but yeah, you guys check that out if you haven't already. I'll leave a link here in the description. And um, but yeah, you guys drop me some comments too. Let me know what you guys want to see me tie next, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.